I'm convinced our different personality trade-offs are the reason why we can do so well together. How it's not always about complimenting each other, but very much about challenging each other. I'm proudly standing here today as a proof that true love has no boundaries. The vow I make to you today is the same one I made to you after our 10th day together, lying on a slowly molding mattress in the back of a rusty Toyota Hyas. We said we'd find a way to make it work and not give up on the young, stupid love we already had for each other. This is for you, Margaret and Lottie. Yeah. Keep it happy, guys. Okay, go one, two, three. One, two, three. Cheers to you. Cheers to you.
Ahmadi, I have never met a couple like you two. You come from backgrounds that on the surface could not be any more divergent. Your relationship defies the odds. You are bonded like two atoms sharing an electron. With each new shock, new stress, new adventure, your bond gets stronger. In New Zealand, you two soon became inseparable. Margaret saw herself as Lottie's co-pilot. Within hours of meeting Lottie, she, without permission, went to the back of his van to organize his <laughs> underwear drawer. <laughs> she said, I needed space for my socks. Lottie played tour guide, showing her New Zealand's hidden gems from overlooked beaches to magical hikes. Margaret had thought of herself as some kind of seasoned traveler. Then she met Lottie. But then Margaret returned to Minnesota. 7,000 miles away, Lottie visited. Over the next few years, Margaret and Lottie would never be apart for more than a few months, logging hundreds of thousands of air miles in deep coach, eating nothing but peanuts. <laughs> Their bonds getting stronger with each trip. Margaret found a job leading tours in Africa. Lottie joined. It seems like the more you put between these two people, the more they wanted to be together. In early 2020, Margaret and Lottie traveled to Asia on one of their many trips. And Lottie headed back early to go work on the e-bikes and Margaret thought she'd stick around and backpack in Southeast Asia. But then the world changed and Margaret found herself barely escaping lockdown in Singapore, rerouting her plane, her trip to wind up in Lottie's 1,200 person village in rural Czech where there is no restaurants but there is one pub where there are more stray cats than there are people who speak English. It was a global pandemic. Couples around the world are stranded at home with nothing to do and nowhere to go. I think my sister told her husband he was blinking too loud. But for Margaret and Lottie, their relationship flourished. It reached new heights. They're anti-fragile. In the last two years, your YouTube channel exploded. 175,000 people watch the videos you create each week. 175,000 people. Your business, Lottie, of selling DIY e-bike kits has boomed. You have incredible vision and aspiration for the years ahead. This is what lockdown did to this couple. You are natural explorers, and you savor the simple things in life. And when I talked to you, and you told me about these things, which I'm going to read, I thought this was a Hallmark card. I didn't believe any of it. But it's real. Doing your laundry in a freshwater creek, melting chocolate on the windshield of your van, turning off your flashlights to go on a night hike because to quote Margaret, the moon was light enough. This doesn't happen to people. This is your life. You fell in love with each other while taking photos of your adventures, while photographing the natural beauty that you found in everyday life. All right. Yep. We have to grab his feet, too. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Now, Margaret, you and I formed a unique and very special bond. I began to see you as a sister a few years ago when you and I found some, some common ground. We had kind of a, a shared perspective on the world. And together, we talked about how annoying and irritating we found our parents. And to that, I knew you were my sister. <laughs> We talked about today and agreed that this ceremony would not be close to complete if we didn't talk about the very real relationship you had with your father, Blaine. It hasn't always been easy for you two, but with a tear in his eye, 
Blaine described to me some of the moments with you as some of the best moments in his life. He told me about the weekly Saturday breakfast you had during the tough years at Perkins, where for three years straight, you went to Perkins, got breakfast together, and you ordered the exact same thing every time. You became famous among the wait staff. Or as a young adult, after you had graduated, working in downtown Minneapolis, when he went to weekly happy hours with you at the Ocean Air, in downtown Minneapolis, where, as we say, Blaine got to realize a father's greatest joy, being able to get hammered with his daughter on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and more recently, of course, the many trips Blaine took with you and Lottie from Africa and India and Thailand to Greece, where Blaine said that in that RV you spent three weeks and he helped Lottie brainstorm a business plan for his e-bike business. He describes Lottie as the greatest capitalist in the family. <laughs> Margaret and Lottie, you are so lucky to have Blaine as your father. And I speak for a lot of people here today when I say that none of us would be standing here without your dad, Blaine. We also take this minute to recognize and honor Lottie's amazing family in the Czech Republic, who are perhaps more involved in this couple's life than anybody. Lottie's parents have taken in Margaret as their daughter. They have helped this couple build a new life, and not in a poetic way, in an actual way, in a literal sense. They've helped you build a new life with hammers and nails and screws and welding and wiring and an old junkyard you've rehabilitated into a home for yourself and your friends. Czech culture does not emphasize big opulent wedding ceremonies. Czech culture favors the daily deeds. It favors showing up and showing an expression of love through hard work, through love and proximity. And boy, has Lottie's family over-delivered. While Lottie's family is not here in Scottsdale today, this couple would not be here in Scottsdale without Lottie's family. Lottie, you were the first person to outwardly encourage my spontaneity and not be threatened by my flight risk tendencies. You supported me living the life I wanted for myself, which pushed our relationship to endure two and a half years of long distance, surviving off of voice notes and grainy iPhone 4 photos. Your creativity inspires me and your problem-solving skills are as fast and cunning as they are consistently unpredictable. When you visited me in Kenya and saw me struggling with the packs of vervet monkeys who would climb into our truck and steal all of the snacks, you took your pocket knife, a thick branch, and an exercise resistance band and concocted the most powerful and precise slingshot ever known to man. You stood guard over the opened ingredients as I cooked our group dinner, slinging small pebbles at the confident thieves. <laughs> it's no secret that I'm the loud and outgoing one, which usually means I draw the most attention from others. But you're the one who deserves it. I'm so lucky to have you. It was me that hit the jackpot. Lottie, you are every good thing. You are brilliant, kind, creative, hilarious, thoughtful, responsible, and adventurous, and your unnaturally fast metabolism is something that a Greek god would envy. <laughs> we come from different worlds, both in culture and in language, and being with you has expanded my perspective on every topic. You challenge me on everything, every day, and somehow you're my biggest supporter. I promise to be the travel buddy, business partner, best friend, and wife that we all know you deserve. I promise to support your over-the-top crazy ideas and tackle them as a team. 
I promise to make you laugh when I see you taking life just a little bit too seriously. When you go to the bathroom, I promise to tell you all the family gossip I heard when you were gone. And I, most of all, uh, I promise to charge the camera battery before it hits the 20%. <laughs> I promise now here in front of everyone to choose you and prioritize you for the rest of our lives. Margaret, I've been wondering for a long time how these two individuals from different worlds ended up to get, uh, together. How two such different personalities can make it through six years all the way to where we are standing now. You, happy, adventurous, bubbly personality, friendly and quirky character with so much hair. <laughs> and despite our difficulty, difficult circumstances, 8,000 miles of distance, not seven. <laughs> different goals and cultures, we made it all work so easily. All the adventures, romance, philosophical wine evenings we've had together made it all worth carrying on. I knew it would be difficult to tame Margaret Miller, the dreamer from corporate America, dreaming not about career growth, but where to scrape extra days of work planning not your first mortgage, but how to save and invest money and travel the world for free. This wild trap corporate bird dreams about a colorful world outside of her cage. I'm not going to be the one, not in the past, not now, and certainly not in the future. I would be the one clipping your wings. Suppressing the world from this joyful contribution of yours has never been my intention. Instead I, instead, I promise to you to support your wilderness and creativity. I promise to always be your supportive force, prototyping a new jet to fly you even further. Lottie, do you welcome Margaret as your wife? offering her your love and encouragement, your trust and respect, as together you create your future. I do. <laughs> Margaret, do you welcome Lottie as your husband, offering him your love and encouragement, your trust and respect, as together you create your future? I do. Lottie. I do. <laughs> Definitely do. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. No, you interviewed me. Okay. Um, what is your name? My name is Donald Guerin. And what is your relationship to the bride and groom? Uh, the minister is my son. Okay, how else do you know the uh, The bridesmaid is my daughter, and the guy that's escorting her up is my son-in-law. Okay, makes sense. Um, who invited you here tonight? Was uh, it the bride's side or the groom's side? It was Blaine. Oh. Blaine I called you me. Know Blaine. Blaine called me. We golf together. Okay. <laughs> Would you or would you not say you're Eskimo brothers? Please have everyone's attention. 
At this time, it is my honor and privilege to announce the newlyweds. Let's hear it for husband and wife, Lottie and Margaret! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we are honored to hear and have some speeches. First, we are going to have a welcome from the father of the bride. Everyone put your hands together for Blaine. Let's hear it for him. I'm so happy you are all here celebrating this uh, wonderful occasion with Lynn and I. I especially want to thank everybody who has traveled far away to be with us today. I also want to thank my wife, Lynn, who for pulling off this amazing wedding weekend. She did a lot of work. So thank you, sweetie. I was immediately impressed when I first met Lottie years ago in Minnesota. We became good friends over the years with trips to parts of Czechia, Poland, Africa, Greece, India, Thailand, and Germany. You really get to know somebody during a three-week, 1,000-mile truck ride <laughs> through five African countries, and then a three-week trip in an RV driving around the mainland of Greece. Oh Lottie is a selfless person, as I'm sure you've heard before, who went out of his way to do the difficult jobs in order to make the, the trip much easier and more fun for me. What cemented my love and respect for Lottie comes down to this. He makes Margaret happy and empowers her to pursue her dreams. A father could not ask for more. During the six plus years I've, I've known Lottie, Margaret said to me at one time, sometimes I think you like Lottie more than you like me. <laughs> and my reply was, sometimes you're right. <laughs> I am so proud to call him my son-in-law. Like most fathers, I met my newborn baby in the delivery room. But unlike most fathers, I resuscitated my baby after a complicated and difficult delivery. APGAR scoring is a way of determining potential birth injury after delivery. There are five categories, appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respiration. I gave Margaret her APGAR scores. Her first one was a five, which was not good. As you all can see, there's a happy ending to this story after a very frightful beginning. In honor of her wedding day, 30 years later, I'm going to give her an updated APGAR score. <laughs> I've renamed the categories. In the first category, A is for accomplished. Growing up, Margaret's primary fascination was traveling. At a very young age, Margaret knew herself. That's really unusual her strengths and her weaknesses. She actually directed me to do things that made her successful without me initial, initially realizing it. W wanting to get a job, starting at the Uptown Diner, moving on to Walgreens as a beauty consultant, <laughs> doing this as a seventh and eighth grader, being an AFS foreign exchange student at age 16, working at the American Legion as a bartender during college. Yeah, remember the Legion? There's a lot, of, I spent a lot of time at the Legion. S summer jobs as a counselor at Spanish immersion camps, always negotiating with me regarding semesters abroad or gap trips during college. Remember Panama? Always working towards independence and success because she was gaining so much real world experience at a young age. Now she's starting businesses, marketing, photography, videography, editing, accounting, negotiating, and of course, wedding planning in Arizona while living in Europe. <laughs> P is for personable. Margaret lights up a room and makes everyone feel welcome and included. <laughs> and people are drawn to Margaret. <laughs> she's always had that gift. G is for genuine. Margaret, Margaret is genuine and authentic. She has always been able to communicate with others, 
even in difficult times. A is for assured. Margaret has always been confident because she knows herself. She trusts herself and isn't afraid to leave a comfort zone. Finding a way to get a month off from corporate work in Minneapolis to camp around the South Island of New Zealand alone, planning the trip without my knowledge, and then trying to sell me on how safe it was going to be. <laughs> I remember her asking her why she didn't do some of these activities with friends. Her response was something like, if I always had to wait for someone to be available, I probably wouldn't be going anywhere. The next bombshell was letting me know she lined up a, jo a, a job as a tour guide in Africa. To say I wasn't pleased is an understatement. As usual, it turned out to be a great decision. R is for resilient. As a parent, you never want to see your child struggle, especially when it's not their fault. She has not let those struggles define her, a tribute to her character, strength, and courage. Congratulations, Margaret. 30 years later, and you're a perfect 10 on your dad's app car. I love you. One more time for Blaine, the father of the bride, everybody. To see her walk down the aisle today, and compared to her growing up in, in college, what was, that, what was that like? You know, it's funny because, like, Margaret, in her essence, has always been the same. Like, she just, she is who she is. And she looked absolutely beautiful today. Like, I've never seen a more beautiful bride in my life. But, um... It, it wasn't all that different from the first time I met her just because of her like natural exuberance and her charisma. That's always been the case. Yeah. Well said. Listen, yeah. I, yeah. I saw you get teary eyed sometimes. Oh, Tell me about that. I would say I've probably been to 50 weddings, not exaggerating, and this is the wedding that I cried the most at. Yeah. Um, of all, because, well, a few reasons. Um, Lottie, you did, you did a phenomenal job, man, and I actually hadn't heard you talk about Margaret like that um, ever before in my life, and it was really so sweet, and I think what you said about never being the one to clip her wings or steal her joy that she brings to the world um, away from everyone else was like so um, heartfelt and genuine, and it really made me appreciate the relationship that you two have um, at a deeper level, so that is why I was bawling my eyes out. <laughs> Good evening. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jackie, Margaret's stepsister. And I'm Rich, Lottie's stepbrother-in-law. Margaret and Lottie came into our lives last year at my mom and Blaine's wedding. Before meeting them, my mom would go on and on and on and on about how amazing they are and how they live in their van with a stray cat. Naturally, I was a little unsure. Fast forward to the wedding weekend when I was first meeting Margaret. Within minutes, I was drawn to her warmth, self-confidence, and authenticity. Conversation felt effortless, as if we had known each other forever. As Blaine's expensive wine kept flowing, it wasn't long before Margaret was dancing around the house in her iconic animal print pajama set. By the second night, we were much less reserved. Blaine's wine was still flowing, and my lovely husband decided to throw me into the hot tub with my dress on. And later would throw Margaret in with her animal pajamas. While I was fuming with my mas mascara running down my face, Margaret embraced it and decided to take it to the next level. Margaret and Lottie decided to have a backflip competition off of the hot tub and into the pool. Needless to say, Dr. Miller and my mom were less than pleased. The more that they would yell at Margaret to stop, the bigger her backflip splashes would be. And this is the night that I knew me and Margaret were meant to be sisters. We left that weekend with a nasty hangover and an extended family we could only dream of. And it would not take long for us to start planning our next family get-together. Oh, hold on, hold on. To be fair, the us that started planning the next family get-together was in fact only Lottie and I. And it all started on the night of Lynn and Blaine's rehearsal dinner. Lottie and I were in the parking lot practicing snowboarding moves on the stone pavers. Two grown men spinning around on imaginary snowboards, 
talking through the mechanics of the tricks like a couple of physics nerds. It was love at first shred. <laughs> that night, we decided that they'd come visit us during the upcoming winter season so we could do a proper snowboarding trip to Tahoe. Lottie and I kindly agreed to let Margaret and Jackie watch our two kids, and we sped off to the mountains to spend the next three days working on becoming pro snowboarders. Each day we caught the first chair up and the last chair down, and if it wasn't for me begging for water breaks, I'm thoroughly convinced that Lottie would have never stopped snowboarding. Over those three days, Lottie and I talked about everything, from our idiotic DIY projects and perspectives on life, to our lifelong dreams and how he really feels about Blaine. Really though, all good things, Blaine, wherever you are. <laughs> I've never met someone quite as interesting and unique as Lottie. His enthusiasm for trying new things and his passion for learning is contagious. Margaret and Lottie together have made things I can only dream of building. His obsession for, for Chipotle burritos makes us a match made in heaven. We are so lucky that our kids get to call you Auntie Margaret and Uncle Lottie Slavi. Your creativity and spontaneity inspires us all. We are grateful to be part of your special day, celebrating your love, and kicking off the beginning of the rest of your life. We love you and can't wait to do shots on the dance floor all night long. So can we all please raise a glass to Margaret and Lottie. Cheers. All right, everybody, let's put our hands together for Rich and Jackie, it's here for them. How's the wedding been so far? I don't think there was a dry eye in the room during the ceremony, and we were just saying how this is the most fun, authentic wedding we've ever been to. Yeah, Grant, a lot of emotion. Uh... Did it hit you at some point? It did, but I don't like to admit it. Uh, Welcome <laughs> back in the US, right? Uh, yeah, midwinter, probably. I want them to do what they want to do, but we will go, we'll connect with them wherever they are in the world. Yeah. We'll go to them too. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we have one more toast and speech that we're going to hear, and that's going to be from our bridesmaid, Corey. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, for those who I haven't yet met, my name is Corey, um, and I have known Margaret since she was 18, and brand new to Morris, Minnesota, uh, a tiny little town in west central Minnesota, basically near Fargo. She was the loudest freshman <laughs> taking Morris by storm. <laughs> she also had this very widespread group of friends, um, so that you just knew Margaret was coming to wherever the party was. She was going to be there. And in all of that, it was clear to me, someone who slightly more introverted, Margaret's a lot. I think we can agree. She, she's just a lot. As the years went by and our friend groups merged, however, I learned firsthand that Margaret was definitely a lot in all of the best ways. As you may have noticed, uh, your tears will never scare Margaret. She has more than enough for everyone. She's also the ultimate hype woman. <laughs> she cheers you on. Um, she literally drove 10 hours to watch me graduate from Kansas. Rock chalk. A trip that I would have never asked her to make, um, and I'm pretty sure I didn't ask her to make, she just showed up. <laughs> I've really never met anyone who could love so boldly and so compassionately. I'm guessing similar to most of you, our friendship since then has continued at a distance, um, consisting of a lot of, for some reason, 6 a.m. phone calls. I still, Margaret, have this on my phone if you want to listen to it. Um, it was from July 2015, and it consists of Margaret honestly whining about a pointless blind date she was about to go on um, with a guy from Duluth because, quote, even if it works out, he lives too far away. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a two-hour drive for those who don't know. But after that, I received a voice note. Who here has received a voice note from Margaret? Oh, yes. 
and it was Margaret reporting back from her latest adventure, a faded hitchhiking trip through New Zealand where a handsome Czech photographer stole her heart and introduced her to a whole new way of life. In the years that have followed, Margaret and Lottie have had a lot of adventures, including a trip to the US where I first met Lottie, and it was clear in that first meeting that Lottie was exactly the partner Margaret needed. A co-adventurer, a collaborator, someone to level up her most wild ideas. And it has been an absolute thrill to tag along with the two of you from a distance. But I wanna take a moment to thank Lottie because um, earlier today I was reminded about those two years that Margaret spent in corporate America. <laughs> And those 6 a.m. phone calls and those tears, a lot of them came from those two years. She was trying to fit into a world that just wasn't made for her. When Margaret returned from New Zealand, it was a little scary for her best friend because it was 180 difference. She was happy, she had a purpose, she had a drive. She knew where she was going. And Lottie, that's because of you. Please know that I have always loved you, no matter what Margaret says after a fight. You always have me as a friend in your corner. I'd like to invite everyone to raise a glass. We wish you a lot of laughter and a lot of love on the road ahead. To Lottie and Margaret. I'm gonna stay with Margaret. <laughs> I don't know. She's, She's gonna been be playing fun. the shot girl. I don't know if Hunter has enough tequila. Uh, it won't be me, no. that's for sure, because I've. this is the third night that we've been celebrating. So I'm just going to be very, very relaxed, and I'm going to watch the young people have fun. Oh,